All right, this will be the second quiz for the upper extremity muscles. Um, again, we'll go through. Once we're done asking the questions, I will let you know. You can pause the video, double check your answers. Once you're ready, unpause, and we'll go over the correct answers together. All right, let's begin. Number one. We're gonna go here, so we're gonna bring the arm out this way. Let's get this out of the way here. I'm gonna go over. Let's move these guys out of the way like that. And I think right there, yeah, that's the point. So from this position, we have this whole muscle here. And actually in this picture, I think we can see all three parts. So we got one part here, second part there, and then what I want you to identify is this third part that we can see right here. So this part of this whole muscle that we can see, that part there. That's number one. Number two is we come back here. I want you to identify this muscle, specifically this part of it here. That part. Number three is, let's drape the arm up this way. And over here, so we're on the posterior lateral side of the elbow. We're just gonna move this little bit of fascia out of the way there. And I want you to identify this muscle that we uncover right here. That one. That's number three. Number four. It'll be over here, here, and we want to identify this muscle that we can see here. And this one originates over here, and if we follow it down, it's going to end right over here. That muscle. Number five. Let's bring the arm, we'll drape it up this way. And over here, let's move some of this vasculature out of the way. All right, and over here, we have two muscles here. We have one that sits on top of the other one, I want you to name this one here that's a little bit more superficial. So that muscle starts there, follow it down, it's gonna end right over here, all right? That muscle there. Number six. Here. All right, we're gonna take this muscle, we're gonna move it out of the way like that and I want you to identify this muscle here this one that we uncover right there so again to take this muscle move it out of the way identify that one there that's number six number seven here all right, we wanna identify this muscle that we can see here, this muscle here, which originates over here. And if we follow it down, right, it is gonna come down and connect to a piece of connective tissue in the palm of the hand right there, this muscle. That was number seven. Number eight is we're gonna loosen the wrist and we're gonna slide these muscles out of the way like that. And down here we uncover these two muscles side by side. Of those two, I want you to identify this one, this muscle that we can see here. And if we follow that one out, it's going to attach out here. Identified that muscle. That was number seven. I'm sorry, number eight. That was number eight. 
Number nine is we're going to bring this up over this way again, like that. And here, just move this vasculature out of the way. I want you to identify this muscle here, right, which originates down here, followed out, and it is going to end here, 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 and here, all on those spots there. That was number nine. Number 10, here, let's put this muscle back. So we want to identify this muscle here has three parts. One, two, three parts. I want you to identify that first part up here. Number 11 is here. And I want you to identify what bony feature can we palpate right over here? What bony feature can we palpate right there? That was 11. Number 12 is down here. What bony feature can we palpate right over here, right on this spot? So you can see what side of the hand we're on, right? We're over on this side. I want you to tell me what bony feature can I palpate right over here. Number 13. So for number 13, there's four things you're gonna put. I want you to tell me what four movements neutralize if your answer for number four and your answer for number five contract at the same time. If four and five contract at the same time, name four movements that neutralize for four and for five. All right, that was for number 13. So you're gonna put four things for number 13. Number 14. For number 14, you're gonna name two movements that number eight can perform. For number 14, name two movements that number eight can perform. And then for number 15, I want you to name one movement that both number two and number 10 have in common. Name one movement that both number two and number 10 have in common. All right, that's all the questions. So pause if you need more time. And when you're ready, unpause and we'll go over the correct answers. All right, number one was here, kind of went over here, and we could we were looking at triceps brachii here, and here we could see all three parts. We could see the long head here, we could see the lateral head there, and then the one I asked about here was the medial head of triceps brachii, which we can see right there. That was number one. Number two was to follow biceps, right? So we got biceps brachii, specifically this part of it here, which is the short head of biceps. Number three, kind of move the arm back to this position. And on the lateral posterior side of the elbow, we want to identify this muscle here, and that was anconius. Number four was here here was to identify this muscle right here, all the way on the medial side of the anterior form, and that's gonna be flexor carpi ulnaris. That one there. Number five was to go on the posterior side of the forearm, 
over here and to identify we had two muscles here these two guys one that kind of sits on top of the other one we wanted the, this one that's a little bit more superficial and that is going to be extensor carpi radialis longus extensor carpi radialis longus Number six was back over here as we took biceps, moved specifically the short head of biceps out of the way, and we wanted this muscle that we uncover underneath of there, and that would be coracobrachialis. Number seven was down here on the anterior side of the forearm. We wanted to identify this muscle here it's right next to flexor carpi radialis, this little guy here um, that goes down and attaches to connective tissue in the palm. That would be palmaris longus. Number eight was a deeper muscle in the forearm. So we kind of loosened the wrist a little bit, moved these muscles out of the way, and we wanted to identify this muscle that we're seeing here, this one, and that is gonna be flexor pollicis longus. Number nine was back on the posterior side of the forearm over here. And we wanted to identify this muscle here, which we traced it down and I said it attached out here so all of these digits, and you can see we're going to digits one, or I'm sorry, two, three, four, and five, which means that that'll be extensor digitorum. Number 10 was back over here. Here we had identified this muscle here. And we said it had three different parts, kind of one, to three parts. We wanted this first part over here, which would be clavicular head of pectoralis major. Number 11 was a bony feature that we could palpate over here on the medial side of the elbow joint, and that's going to be the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Number 12 Another bony feature that we can palpate down here on the pinky side of the wrist, and that's gonna be the styloid process of the ulna. Number 13 was if your answer for four and five contracted at the same time, four movements that would neutralize. So number four was flexor carpi ulnaris. Number five, was your extensor carpi radialis longus, okay? So we have a flexor carpi muscle and an extensor carpi muscle. That means that flexion of the hand at the wrist and extension of the hand at the wrist, they would neutralize, so that's two of the movements. Then we also have an ulnaris muscle and a radialis muscle here, and that means that your ulnar and radial deviations would also neutralize. So those would be the four things. Flexion of the hand at the wrist, extension of the hand at the wrist, radial deviation of the hand at the wrist, ulnar deviation of the hand at the wrist. Those are the four things that would neutralize if four and five contracted at the same time. Number 14 was named two movements that number eight can perform. And number eight was flexor pollicis longus. And that again was this guy that we could see under here, like down in that area. That was flexor pollicis longus. And two movements that that one can perform is flexion of the hand at the wrist and also flexion of the thumb or the pollux, both of those things. And then the last one, number 15, was name one movement that both number two and number 10 can perform. So number two was biceps brachii short head Number 10 was pectoralis major clavicular head. So both of those muscles, biceps, brachii, short head, 
and the clavicular head of pectoralis major. Both of them cross the anterior side of the shoulder joint, so both of them can perform flexion of the arm at the shoulder. That would be one movement that both of those muscles uh, have in common. That's it.